بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد to the book so the imam the muallif the author of this book رحمه الله he says وجميع ما وصفت لك في هذا الكتاب فهو عن الله تعالى وعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعن أصحابه وعن التابعين وعن القرن الثالث إلى القرن الرابع Everything that I have described to you in this book is from Allah the Most High from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم from his companions from the tabi'oon and from the third generation to the fourth then the imam he says fattaqillah ya abdullah wa alayka bit tasdiq wat taslim wat tafwid wal rida lima fi hadha al kitab wa la taktum hadha al kitab ahadan min ahli al qibla fa'asa yarudda allah bihi hayranan عن حيرته أو صاحب بدعة عن بدعته أو ضالا عن ضلالته فينجو به فاتق الله وعليك بالأمر الأول العتيق وهو ما وصفت لك في هذا الكتاب فرحم الله عبدا ورحم والديه ورحم والديه قرأ هذا الكتاب وبثه وعمل به ودعا إليه واحتج به فإنه دين الله ودين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The noble imam he continued and he said So fear Allah O servant of Allah affirm submit surrender to and be pleased with what is in this book do not hide this book from any one of the people of the qibla perhaps through it allah will bring a confused person out of his confusion or an innovator out of his innovation or a misguidance misguided one or a misguided one out of his misguidance and he may be saved through it so fear allah and take to the affair as it originally was that is what i have described to you in this book may allah have mercy upon a person and his parents who read this book circulates it acts upon it calls to it and uses it as a proof for it is the religion of Allah and Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam whoever allows something contrary to this book he is not practicing Allah's religion the sheikh says fa innahu man istahalla shay'an khilaf ma fi hadha al-kitab فإنه ليس يدين لله بدين وقد رده كله كما لو أن عبدا آمن بجميع ما قال الله عز وجل إلا أنه شك في حرف فقد رد جميع ما قال الله تعالى وهو كافر Whoever allows something contrary to this book he is not practicing Allah's religion and has refused all of it just as if a servant believed all that Allah the blessed and the most high says except that he doubted a single letter he doubted about it a single letter then he has rejected everything which Allah said and is an unbeliever the sheikh continues kama anna shahada 
أن لا إله إلا الله لا تقبل من صاحبها إلا بصدق النية وخالص اليقين إلا بصدق النية وخالص اليقين كذلك لا يقبل الله شيئا من السنة في ترك بعض ومن ترك من السنة شيئا فقد ترك السنة كلها فعليك بالقبول وضع عنك المماحلة واللجاجة فإنه ليس من دين الله في شيء وزمانك خاص زمان سوء فاتق الله The noble Imam al-Barbahari he says likewise Allah is not accepted of one just as the testification just as the testification that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah is not accepted from a person unless his intention is pure and sincere and he has full certainty. Likewise, Allah will not accept anything from the sunnah from one who abandons a part of it. Whoever contradicts and rejects anything from the sunnah has rejected all of the sunnah except accept and avoid contending and disputing it is not from Allah's religion at all your time meaning the time that you're living in in particular is a time of evil so beware of Allah that is fear Allah from that inshallah we want to read some questions that were posed to some of the ulama of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah from this blessed da'wah at Da'wah Salafiyyah by our brother Hassan al-Sumali Hafizahullah wa ta'ala our brother Hassan al-Sumali he says as-su'al al-akhir mata yakhruju al-raju min al-manhaj al-salafi wa yahkum alayhi fa'an bi'annahu laysa salafiy the last question from a series of questions when does a person leave the Salafi manhaj? And when is he declared not to be a Salafi? This question was posed, presented, submitted to Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri. Habitahullah. Al-Jawab. Hada bayyanahu ahlu al-ilm. Wadamanahu kutubahum. ونصانحهم وهو ضمن منهجهم وذلك أن الرجل يخرج من السلفية إذا خالف أصلا من أصول أهل السنة وقامت الحجة عليه بذلك وأبى الرجوع فإنه يخرج من السلفية كذلك قالوا حتى في الفروع إذا خالف فرعا من فروع الدين فأصبح يوالي ويعادي في ذلك فإنه يخرج من السلفية شيخ عبيد الجابري حبيبه الله he said this has been clarified by the people of knowledge and they have documented this in their books and their admonitions and this is included in their manhaj that when a person opposes one fundamental from the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah and the proof is established upon them, وقامت الحجة عليه بذلك and the proof is established upon them, وأبى الرجوع and he refuses, listen to the steps, and he refuses to return, meaning to return to the belief of Ahl Sunnah, then indeed he leaves, he exits from Salafiyya. And likewise, they said that even in the branches, they, Shaykh Ubaid is saying, the ulama have said, and likewise, they said 
that even in the branches, that if he opposes a branch from the branches of the religion and makes wala and bara upon this, then verily he leaves Salafiya. Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan al Fawzan, this is something separate now, explains that the present day groups are considered from the 72 misguided sects. He was asked the question Are these groups from the 72 misguided sects? The Sheikh says in his book, Al Ajwibatul Mufida, yes, whoever opposes. Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'a from those who ascribe themselves to Islam in Dawah or in Aqidah or in anything from the fundamentals of Iman, then he enters the 72 sects and he is under this threat and he is censored and punished depending on the extent of his opposition. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al Wasabi, Habibullah Ta'ala, our brother Hassan Somali has submitted. When does a person leave Ahlus Sunnah? The Sheikh said, Perhaps you remember the statement of the Allama al Shatibi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his book Al I'tisam. The summary would be that a person would leave the sphere of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'a in two cases. Number one, إذا خالف أهل السنة في أصل من أصولهم, if he opposes Ahlu Sunnah in a fundamental, in a fundamental from their fundamentals. In one asl of their usul, and as you know, the Sheikh says, as you know, from the usul of Ahl Sunnah is gathering upon the truth, and they have split from it. Number two, if he becomes drowned, that is, opposes many parts. Our brother Musa, who has visited and does classes here, our brother Musa Richardson, he posed the question, when do we say that a common person is no longer a Salafi? The answer to this question that was given to Sheikh Rabi' al-Mujahid, al-Muhaddith, he says, the common person like the average Rafidi, meaning Shia, or the average Sufi, or their likes from the people of partisanship, if he affirms their ideas, and he follows them, befriending people for their sake, and opposing the Salafis, for example, and opposing the Salafis, for example, then he is from them. Then he is from them. Sheikh Rabia continues in the answer. But if he is not active, meaning doing the aforementioned, and he is a person who accepts the truth, then he is to be advised and taught the Salafi menhaj. There should be no rush in judging him. There should be no rush in judging him. But if he is active with them and accepts their ideas, as I have mentioned, then he is from them. Other than this, Sheikh Rabia says, the ordinary person who does not understand, the ordinary person who does not understand, the ordinary person who does not understand, what they are upon, the one who holds no animosity or stance against the Salafi methodology, such a person should be dealt with patiently, taught, and advised, 
there should be no rush in judging him. There should be no rush in judging him. Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi rahimallah was asked, when does a man leave Ahl Sunnah? The Sheikh replied, if a person innovates in innovation, or it was innovated and he fell into it, if he himself introduced it into Islam, or he didn't introduce it, but he fell into it. For verily he is to be advised. So if he accepts this advice, then in this case he is to be ascribed, that is considered, from Ahlul Sunnah, and he doesn't leave it. If he does not accept the advice, and the innovation is one which is clear, then surely he leaves Ahlul Sunnah, and he is not a Sunni. And we should know that everyone who is Sunni is Salafi, and everyone who is Salafi is Sunni. Then he is not a Sunni. Neither is he one of Salafi Aqeedah in this matter. And it is not to be said, Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi said, it is not to be said that he is a Salafi, and it is not to be said that he is from Ahlul Sunnah. So, with that, inshallah, we'd like to read now with a further explanation from Sharh al Sunnah by Imam al Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala. And we'd like to bring that explanation and or comments from Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan al Fawzan and some comments lesser in degree from Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi rahimahullah who has passed away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on him Sheikh Saleh ibn Fawzan al Fawzan habibahullah ta'ala in his explanation of this noble book Sharh al Sunnah he says qala al muallif رحمه الله اعلموا أن الإسلام هو السنة والسنة هي الإسلام ولا يقوم أحدهما إلا بالآخر The Sheikh he says that the author Imam al-Barbahari رحمه الله he said know that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam and one of them cannot be established without the other. Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, Habibullah Ta'ala, he says, Qawluhu I'lam. His statement, that is the author's statement, you should know. He says, Hadihi kalimatun lil ihtimam. Hadihi kalimatun lil ihtimam. Wa ma'na I'lam, ay ta'allam. وكيف تعلم أن الإسلام هو السنة إذا تعلمت علمت ذلك. Sheikh Saleh Fawzani says the author's statement you should know. Ilam, which we know for those who are studying Arabic or those who are Arabs and they already know from childhood from learning Arabic in their countries, or those who are non-Arabs and learn Arabic in their countries, unlike us West, we Westerners, you know that Ilam is a verb of command, is a verb of command. It's an imperative verb. Commanding someone to do something. I'lam. A verb of command or an imperative verb. Sheikh Saleh Fawzani says, this phrase or this statement, and we could say phrase because we know that a verb of command actually is a sentence. Because it's saying to you, I'lam anta. You should know. He says this phrase is to show importance. And the meaning of I'lam, no, means ta'allam. You should learn. The meaning of the statement that the Sheikh, the author of this book, Al Imam al Barbari, is using saying no means you should learn. Meaning learn. It doesn't mean, in other words, you should just have knowledge of something. No, because in order for you to have knowledge of something with certainty, 
and firmness, you have to have studied it. You just don't say no to someone and they automatically know. They may have heard what you said, but here the meaning of it is you should study. You should study what we're about to say. This is what he's saying. So Sheikh Saleh, he says, وَكَيْفَ تَعْلَمُ أَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ هُوَ السُنَّةِ And how are you going to know that Islam is the Sunnah? Because wallahi, this is my statements now, Brother Dawud Adib, not Sheikh Saleh Fawzan. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, those of you present today, barakallahu feekum jami'an, and those of you who are listening, the average Muslim today, and Allah knows best, they do not equate Islam with the Sunnah. They consider Islam something separate from the Sunnah. If we were to use the term Sunnah here, as the prophetic statements, actions, and approval tacitly from the Prophet ﷺ. Or if we use the definition of Sunnah here, as we mentioned last night, as Al Aqidah. No matter which one of the two we use, the average Muslim today does not equate the word, the term Islam with belief or the prophetic way of the Prophet ﷺ, they see them as two separate things. And that's why we have so many different types of Islam. We have 1.4 billion Muslims. There are probably 1.3 billion Islams. Probably. Because everybody has their version and understanding of what is Islam. Everybody. Except for those whom Allah has mercy upon. The author of the explanation, he says, So how will you know that Islam is the sunnah? He says, إِذَا تَعَلَّمْتَ عَلِمْتَ ذَلِكَ He says, if you studied it, then you'll know. If you studied it, then you'll know. Because we're not like Christians. We're not like those other people when we use the term loosely, the other faith groups. We don't just accept or embrace our religion and don't study. It's impossible for a Muslim to worship Allah and not learn. It is totally impossible for a Muslim to worship Allah properly and not learn. The, the practice of Islam has to be just that. It has to be a constant learning in order to practice to worship Allah. The Shaykh, he goes on. فَعْلَمْ كَلِمَةً يُؤْتَى بِهَا لِلْهْتِمَامِ لِمَا بَعْدَهَا The author of this explanation, Shaykh Salah Al-Fawzan, he says, so this statement, no, meaning you should learn, is a statement that comes with it. What comes with it is showing importance to that which comes after it. In other words, when the author says, no. That means we should pay attention. We should pay attention. We should now turn our attention, giving it the utmost importance to what's coming after the statement, no. So when you hear no, or you should know, then whatever is coming after that, then it must be something important. Because an alim, a scholar is not going to say to us, no. And then it doesn't have any importance of what he's going to say after he said no. And we're talking about K-N-O-W, not N-O, for the little ones who may be confused. So, Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah. Now the Sheikh is bringing us an ayah from the book of Allah. And we don't have any English here or the interpretation of the meaning, so may Allah forgive us if we make a mistake in rendering the interpretation of the meaning of this verse. The Sheikh brings a verse from the Book of Allah as a proof that we have to know, i.e., that we have to learn. He brings from Surah Muhammad, and we hope that it's verse 19, because sometimes these books have typographical errors, because more than likely this uh, is a rendering from a transcription that became a book for the sheikh, in many cases the ulama, 
these books, in many cases, not all, many cases, these books are not pinned literally by the sheikh. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes they didn't sit down and write them. Sometimes it's from classes from their head. And then the person is writing it down, and then they get permission from the scholar to transcribe it, and then it's published. So sometimes the verses may be off a little. So they have here the surah is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verse 19. And those of us who have an English translation or a mushaf here, they can check. Where the shaykh brings the verse, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ Know, so then know, that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deed except Allah, and seek forgiveness for your sins. So seek forgiveness, or and seek forgiveness for your sins. Shaykh Salih Fawzan, he says, this means, I'lam means, La ilaha illallah, wa'mal bihi. It means there's nothing worthy of worship as a deity except Allah and implement it. Meaning implement what you've learned about La ilaha illallah. I'ma i'lamu anna allaha shadeedu al-iqab wa anna allaha ghafur rahim. Surah Al-Ma'idah and inshallah it's verse 98. You should know that Allah is shadeedu al-iqab. That Allah is severe in punishment. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ rahim, And that Allah is غَفُورُ rahim, Forgiving, merciful. Then Shaykh Salah Fawzan, he says, فَتَأْتِي كَلِمَةُ إِعْلَمْ أَوْ إِعْلَمُوا لِلْإِهْتِمَامِ لِمَا بَعْدَهَا So the phrase, No, Meaning in the singular. Or i'lamu in the plural. You, an individual. And you, all of you in plural, you should know is to show importance for that which is coming after the statement, no. Meaning you should learn. So whatever is coming after that, that means we should now get up and start learning whatever the sheikh is going to say after he said you should know it. Then Sheikh Salah Fawzan he starts to elaborate what Imam Al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala has stated. Qawluhu, his statement, Al-Islam huwa sunnatu wa sunnatu hiya al-Islam. That Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. Ya'ni, the meaning of it is, Al-Islam huwa tariqatu allati jaa bihi al-rusulu alayhim as-salatu wa-salam wa kullu al-rusuli جاءوا بالإسلام فكل نبي دعا إلى الله وجاء بشريعة من عند الله فذلك هو الإسلام فالإسلام عبادة الله عز وجل وحده في كل وقت بما شرعه وقد شرع الله للأنبياء شرائع إلى آجال ثم ينسخها فإذا نسخت كان العمل بالناسخ هو الإسلام إلى أن نسخت تلك الشرائع بشريعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله جل وعلا لكل أجل كتاب يمحو الله ما يشاء وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Surah Al-Ra'd And if someone has the English, inshallah, when we come to it, they can go to Surah Al-Ra'd, verses 38 to 39. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, that the meaning of Islam is the sunnah. And the sunnah is Islam, is that Islam is the tariqah. It is the path. It is the way. It is the methodology. It is the manner, it is the, ex- it is the modality which all of the messengers came with. And each of those messengers, they came with Islam. Listen closely to this, because this is a very important point. 
because I saw some people, and it happens, it's normal, that when we mentioned earlier at the outset of these talks, we mentioned tonight that there are many Islams, we saw some eyebrows go up. Like, what? This guy's crazy. What are you talking about there's many Islams? We saw some eyebrows go up. And we know that this sounds strange to you, for someone to say there are many Islams. You say to yourself, they brought that guy from the United States to, to confuse us. What does he mean there's many Islams? There's only one Islam. The Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, every single messenger came with Islam. Listen closely. He says, and every prophet, each prophet from amongst the messengers, because every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger, every prophet from those messengers, they called to Allah. And they came with a sharia. They came with a sharia. They came with a law from Allah. They came with a law from Allah, and that was Islam. So Islam is the worship of Allah, the sublime, the mighty. It is the worship of Allah, sublime, the mighty, by itself at every single time. By himself, worship of Allah by himself, alone, at every single time which he legislated. And Allah had already legislated for the prophets laws, canons, laws for every appointed time. Then he abrogated them. Then Allah abrogated them. So when they were abrogated, meaning those laws that those prophets and messengers came with, their Islam, the Islam of Musa, the Islam of Isa, the Islam of Ibrahim, and all the other prophets that we haven't mentioned, and messengers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them, He sent them with their laws for specific times. Then He abrogated them. So when they were abrogated, then the implementation of that which they were abrogated was abrogated by Islam. That is now called Islam. In other words, that which they came with is no longer called Islam. That should be known. That the thing that abrogated those things that were called Islam before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can no longer be called Islam. It's no longer Islam. The Nasikh, now the abrogating factor here, is the real Islam. Those things that were Islam then, was Islam then, for those people, for those times. But the real Islam, the complete Islam, is what we have right now. Is that understood? Is that understood? So that no one will say, like some Muslims do, mistakenly, without understanding, that I follow Musa, and I take from the Torah, as, as well as the Quran, and I follow Isa, and I take from the Injil, as well as the Quran, or I take from the Sufi Ibrahim, the scriptures of Abraham, if they can find any that exist today, and there are some, some remnants of it, and I follow the Quran. No, we have one Islam. And that Islam, by way of its laws, not beliefs, by way of its laws, not beliefs. The beliefs, the aqidah of those prophets were not abrogated. The laws of those prophets, some of them were abrogated. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he goes on. He says, فَإِذَا نُسِخَتْ كَانَ الْعَمَلُ بِالنَّاسِخْ هُوَ الْإِسْلَامِ So if they are abrogated, then that which we work with, that thing that abrogated, the abrogating thing, is Islam. إِلَىٰ أَن نُسِخَتْ تِلْكَ الشَّرَاعِعُ بِشَرِيعَةِ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم And that thing that is abrogated, those laws that are abrogated, they're abrogated by the sharia, the canons, 
the rulings, the regis- re- regulations, and legislations of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if someone has an English translation, Surah Rad, verse thirty-eight, thirty-nine, they can read it inshallah, so that I won't make it a mistake, and you can read for what it says in English. Oh, it's high tech. I want to just read it inshallah, because I may not be able to see it. It's too small. Oh, there's no numbers. <laughs> Anybody have a book? They, they bring it. Like, like last night, you have all these iPhoneians here. Got these iPhones in here. I can't read this stuff. Eh? And it, oh, not even turned it sideways. So, where is it? It's better to get the book. No. Somebody bring the book, inshallah. No, that's not it. <coughs> Is that it? And this is the book after it. No, man, right. Yeah. No, we want English. English, yes, because it's like a lot of time. The mother of the book. Okay, yeah. Oh, now they bring something. I need magnifying glass for this one. Okay. It says, for the Sheikh, he begins not at the beginning of the verse. He brings the part that says, and for every matter there is a decree. That's the point we want, not the beginning of the verse. And for every matter there is a decree. That's verse 38. Verse 39 of Surah Ar-Rad, the thunder. Allah blots out what He wills and confirms what He wills. And with Him is the mother of the book. Then Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, فَالْإِسْلَامُ هُوَ مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الرُّسُلُ So Islam is that which the messengers came with. من الدعوة والعمل في كل وقت بحسبه So it is Islam which every messenger came with, which all the messengers came with, from the da'wah, meaning the da'wah that they gave, and the actions, meaning the implementation of that Islam, at every single time, according to it. إِلَىٰ أَنَّ جَاءَتْ بِعْثَةُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَصَارَ الْإِسْلَامُ هُوَ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ دُونَ غَيْرِهِ He says, all the way up into the advent of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم when he came, the mission of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So then, Shaykh Salaf Awzan says, so then, Al-Islam is what he came with and it's nothing else. So Islam is what he came with and it's nothing else. He says, فَمَنْ بَقِيَ عَلَى الْأَدِيَانِ السَّابِقَةِ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِمُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَلَيْسَ بِمُسْلِمٍ Sheikh Salah Fawzan continuing his elaboration and explanation and comments of the statement of Imam al-Barbahari in this great book, Sharh al-Sunnah, explanation of the creed. He says, So who, whatever, whoever remains, whoever persists and remains upon the previously revealed religions, and he did not believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he is not a Muslim then he is not a Muslim. One sister asked last night, after the questions and answers, because she was confused, and I can't say a little confused, she was greatly confused. She asked the question, why I just want to follow the Quran. I don't want to follow the Hadiths. I just want to follow the Quran. So we gave her an explanation on why you have to follow the Hadiths of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because the Hadith, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, amongst other things, is a part of the divine revelation. Then she said that her professor said that it's, oh, it's permissible and possible for a Jew and a Christian to be a Muslim. It's possible, she said, for a Jew and a Christian to be a Muslim. I said, that's impossible. How, sister? She said, no, no, no. A Jew and a Christian, my professor said, can be a Muslim. I said, okay, let me ask you something. Can a Muslim be a Jew or a Christian? She said, 
My professor said a Jew and a Christian can be a Muslim. I said, okay, can a Muslim be a Jew or a Christian? She said, no. I said, then how can a Jew or a Christian be a Muslim? If a Muslim cannot be a Jew or a Christian, how can a Jew or a Christian be a Muslim? It's impossible. There are some Muslims who believe that there are Jews who are Muslims and Christians who are Muslims. And specifically when we say Jew, we don't mean someone by ethnicity or by land or birthright. We're talking about religiosity now, belief. It's impossible. During the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of which we are living in right now, for a Jewish person, Yahud, Yahudi, or a Nasrani to be a Muslim, for when they embrace Islam, they are no longer Jew or Christian. So Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, so whoever remains upon al adyan al-sabiqa wa lam yu'min bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam falaysa bi Muslim. So whoever remains upon the religions that have previously gone by and he did not believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he's not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. Sheikh Salah Fawzan he continues, حَيْثُ لَمْ يَنْقَضْ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Because he hasn't submitted. He hasn't submitted to Allah, the, the mighty, the sublime. وَلَمْ يُطِعْ هَذَا الرَّسُولِ And he hasn't obeyed this messenger. لِأَنَّ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ قَدِ اتَّهَى وَنُسِخَى He says, because that which he is upon, meaning that Jew or that Christian, it has been done away with. It has been done away with and it has been cancelled and abrogated. It ended. وَالْبَقَاءُ عَلَى الْمَنْصُوخِ لَيْسَ دِينًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّمَا الْعَمَلُ بِالنَّاسِخِ هُوَ الدِّينِ Sheikh Salah Fawzan. He says, So that which remained upon the thing that was abrogated is not a religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a religion for Allah, the, the sublime, the mighty, but rather the implementation that should be done should be the implementation of that which abrogated, that which was abrogated, and that is the religion. Then Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, قوله والسنة هي الإسلام And the sunnah is Islam. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, لا فرق بينهما. There is no difference between the two. There is no difference between al-Islam and al-Sunnah. إذا فسرنا السنة بالطريقة فلا فرق بينهما وبين الإسلام. If we explain that the Sunnah means a path or a method or a modality then there is no difference between that, meaning the sunnah, and Islam. Then Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, Habibullah, he says, and the author then said, وَلَا يَقُومُ أَحَدُهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْآخَرِ And one cannot be established without the other. Sheikh Salah al-Fawzan, he says, لَا يَقُومُ الْإِسْلَامُ إِلَّا بِالسُنَّةِ وَلَا تَقُومُ السُنَّةُ إِلَّا بِالْإِسْلَامِ فَالَّذِي يَدَّعِي الْإِسْلَامَ وَلَا يَعْمَلُ بِالسُنَّةِ أي طريقة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس بمسلم ليس بمسلم والذي يعلم السنة ولا يسلم لله ليس بمسلم وإن عرف السنة فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْجَمْعِ بَيْنَهُمَا And this is very important. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, that the statement of the author, that one of them cannot be established without the other. And as our brother Dawood Burbank has translated it, and one of them cannot be established without the other. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, that is, Islam cannot be performed without the sunnah. Islam cannot be performed without the sunnah. And the sunnah cannot be performed 
without Islam, which answers the sister's question last night. You cannot practice and believe in and follow the Quran without the Sunnah. Because Islam is the Quran and the Quran is Islam. The Shaykh, he says, So whoever claims Al-Islam and does not implement and practice the Sunnah, that is, the Tariqah, the methodology, the manners of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not a Muslim. Sheikh Salah al fawzan says, he is not a Muslim. He says, and the one who knows the Sunnah and doesn't submit to Allah, and he doesn't submit to Allah, then he's not a Muslim, even if he knows the Sunnah. Even if he recognizes the Sunnah, because it is incumbent, inevitable, that we have to make a combination, bring both of them together. We have to bring both of them together. <clears throat> As for the comments and explanation from Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, <coughs> Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, that the meaning that Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam is that Islam is the path of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that the path of uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah the path of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Sunnah and that departure that the author is talking about comes about by two, one of two ways either there is a total departure or there is a partial departure. Meaning, departing from Islam and the Sunnah. There is a total departure, or there is a par partial departure. So whoever totally departs from Islam, then they have left, left Islam, meaning they have become an apostate. And the one who partially lives, leaves Islam or the Sunnah, then it is upon the degree of their departure which determines what they are upon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Then the statement of the author, Rahimahullah ta'ala. فَمِنَ السُنَّةِ لُزُومُ الْجَمَاعَةِ فَمَنْ رَغِبَ غَيْرَ الْجَمَاعَةِ وَفَارَقَهَا فَقَدْ خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنَقِهِ وَكَانَ ضَالًا مُدِلًا The author of the book, Rahimahullah Ta'ala Imam al-Barbahari He says From the sunnah Is clinging to the jama'ah Whoever desires other than the jama'ah And depends and departs from it Then he has thrown off The yoke of Islam from his neck And he is astray Leading others astray Sheikh Salih Fawzan Habibahullah Ta'ala He says the statement of the author and from among the sunnah and from the sunnah is clinging to the jama'ah Sheikh Salah Fawzani says مَا دَامَ الْأَمْرُ كَذَلِكْ وَأَنَّ الْإِسْلَامَ هُوَ السُنَّةِ وَالسُنَّةُ هِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ فَالسُنَّةُ أَنْوَاعِ فَمِنَ السُنَّةِ لُزُومُ الْجَمَاعَةِ أي لُزُومُ جَمَاعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُرَادُ بِالْجَمَاعَةِ هُنَا جَمَاعَةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الَّذِينَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says that the meaning of the author's statements and from the sunnah is clinging to the jama'ah means as long as that affair is like that. As long as that affair is like that. That is, is that Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam for the sunnah has types. The sunnah has types. And then the author said, So from amongst the sunnah is sticking or clinging to the jama'ah. Sheikh Salah Fawzan, he says, that is, 
sticking to the jama'ah of the Muslims. And the intent by jama'ah here is the jama'ah of the Muslims who are upon the truth. The jama'ah of the Muslims who are upon the truth. Sheikh Salah Fawzani says, and now he's getting ready to go into it, and he's going to now ruffle some of our feathers. Those whose feathers deserve to be ruffled. He says, أَمَّا الْجَمَاعَاتُ الَّتِي لَيْسَتْ عَلَى الْحَقِّ فَهَذِهِ لَا تُسَمَّ الْجَمَاعَةَ الْحَقِيقِيَّ كُلُّ جَمَاعَةٍ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَى ضَلَالَةٍ أو على منهج مخالف للإسلام أو على طريقة مخالفة للإسلام فلا تسمى الجماعة الحقيقية المطلوبة الممدوحة شيخ صالح فوزاني says As for the jama'at As for the different groups The different blocks The different parties The different societies That exist today as for those jama'at, Jazakumullah khairan. He says, those that are not upon the truth, he says, then these are not called, meaning in reality, the jama'a, meaning the real jama'a. And we know what the sheikh means. If we don't know what the sheikh means, raise your hand. If you don't understand what the sheikh is saying. Everyone understand what the sheikh is saying? Alhamdulillah. For those who don't and you are, you are shy to raise your hand, what the sheikh means is, for instance, because we have to say it, for instance, the group which I believe that one of those brothers that raised his hand last night and asked a series of questions, he is actually either with that jama'ah or he leans or is sympathetic to that jama'ah. That jama'ah here is Hizb tahrir that's a jama'ah. Like the jama'ah called a tabligh. Firqatul tabligh. Or jama'atul tabligh. That's a jama'ah. Like the ikhwanul muslimin. That's a jama'ah. Like the muhajireen. Who used to be called hizbul tahrir. And then they changed the name again. That's a jama'ah. Like the bilaliyun. The followers of Warhuddin Muhammad. That's a jama'ah. Like Darul Islam movement, that was a jama'ah. Like Iqamat al Deen, they're in America, that is a jama'ah. Like Tanzim al Islam by Isra Ahmed, that's a jama'ah. All of these are jama'at. Sheikh Salah al Fawzani says, لا تسمى الجماعة الحقيقية. They are not the real jama'ah, meaning the jama'ah that Imam al-Barbahari is talking about in this book, Explanation of the Creed. And like Imam Ahmed before him, and like the companions before Imam Ahmed, and like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who used this terminology, al-jama'ah, this is not the jama'ah that the Prophet is talking about, the Shaykh means. He says, كل جماعة اجتمعت على ضلالة أو على منهج مخالف للإسلام أو على طريقة مخالفة للإسلام فلا تسمى الجماعة الحقيقية المطلوبة الممدوحة He says every single جماعة that has gathered together upon misguidance or Upon a methodology in opposition to Islam. Or upon a method or a manner or a way that is in contradiction to Islam. Or in opposition to Islam. Then they are not and they cannot be called the real, desired, praiseworthy jama'ah. Sheikh Salah Fawzan. He says... فالجماعة المرادة هنا هم أهل الحق وليس من لازم ذلك أن يكونوا كثيرين He says so the reality of the intent here what is intended by this statement that Imam al-Barbihari made not from himself but of course from the book and the sunnah here means the people of the truth He says and it is not Something that is binding that those, that that jama'ah be 
large in numbers. This should be understood, brothers. We have to understand this. Because that is something that is confusing to us. We think that because of the word jama'ah, when we think of the word jama'ah, we think of a large group. The sheikh says no. He says, وَلَيْسَ مِنْ لَازِمْ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَكُونُ كَثِيرِينَ This doesn't necessitate because you say the word jama'ah that it has to be a lot of people. He said, بَلْ لَوْ كَانَ وَاحِدًا عَلَى الْحَقِّ فَإِنَّهُ يُسَمَّ جَمَاعَةً He says, but rather, even if it was one individual, like we said last night, even if it's a 12, this is not the sheikh saying, I'm saying this, like we said last night, <laughs> even if it's a 12-year-old girl who is upon the way, the correct belief of Ahl sunnah wa jama'ah in Tibet, and all of the Muslims in Tibet are upon misguidance, then that 12-year-old girl in Tibet is Ahlul Sunnah. She is the Jama'ah. If that little boy in Turkey, in Istanbul, 10 years old, is upon the correct Aqidah and the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, and everybody else is on something else, then that little boy is the Jama'ah. He is the Jama'ah. The Sheikh goes on, he says, فَإِنَّهُ يُسَمَّ جَمَاعًا Then he is called the Jama'ah. فَالْجَمَاعَ هِيَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ For the Jama'ah is the one who is upon the truth. Anyone who is upon the truth. If all the black Muslims in the entire country of Nigeria are upon misguidance, and there's one white brother who's studying in a college or a university, or for whatever reason he's there as a businessman or the like, and he's upon the haq, then he in Nigeria is the jama'ah. He is the jama'ah, and vice versa. If all of the white Muslims in Siberia are upon misguidance, and one Asian brother or sister is upon the haq, then they are in Siberia, the Jama'ah. The Sheikh, he goes on, he says, He says, whether they are small in number, or whether they are large in number. That which is required is that they are upon the truth. That they are upon the truth. وَلَا تُخَالِفِ الْجَمَاعَةَ الَّتِي عَلَى الْحَقِّ and that they are not in opposition to the jama'ah of which is upon the haq, the truth. بَلْ تَكُونُوا مَعَهُمْ عَلَى الْحَقِّ But rather, he is with them upon the truth. فَمَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةَ فَسَيَأْتِي بَيَانُهُ He says, and whoever, so whoever, departs from the jama'ah, then the explanation of that is going to come. Then Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, he says, وَلُزُومُ الْجَمَاعَةِ يَعْنِي عَدَمَ الْخُرُوجِ عَنْهَا وَالِاخْتِلَافِ عَلَيْهَا So clinging to the jama'ah means the absence of exiting from it and being indifferent to them. Is the absence of exiting or departing or leaving the jama'ah and differing and being in conflict with the jama'ah. Then the author says, that is Imam al-Barbahari, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ غَيْرَ الْجَمَاعَةِ وَفَارَقَهَا فَقَدْ خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنَقِهِ So whoever desires other than the jama'ah and departs from it, then he has thrown off the yoke of Islam from his neck, and he has thrown off the yoke of Islam from his neck. هذا النص الحديث And Shaykh Salah Fawzani says that this is the actual statement in the text of the hadith, meaning the Imam al-Barbahari is actually paraphrasing, not paraphrasing, bringing an actual statement from a noble narration from the Messenger of Allah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَاعَةَ قِيدَ شِبْرٍ فَقَدْ خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنَقِهِ 
whoever departs from the jama'ah, even a hand span, then he has taken off. He has khala'a. And we hear the word khala'a a lot. Unfortunately, you brothers and sisters have been plagued with what we've been plagued with in America. You got it after we got it. And our brother Abu Awais, rahimahullah, he used to always jump on me about this. The word khala'a that Imam al-Barabahari uses, and the word that the Prophet sallallahu used in this hadith, مَنْ فَارَقَ الْجَمَعَةَ قِيدَ شِبْرٍ فَقَدْ خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ Whoever departs from the jama'ah, a hand span, فَقَدْ خَلَعَ The Prophet used the word, the verb, خَلَعَ He has done the khala'a of the yoke of Islam from his neck. The word khala'a is found in the word or the word khula. The word khula, when a woman wants to get a khula, this is the same word. It comes from the same root. As we mentioned, Abu Wais, our brother, rahimahullah, he said, Dawood, it's all your fault. He says, because you were the first one in America to mention khula in a lecture and explain it. And if it wasn't for you, all these sisters wouldn't be asking for a khula because they wouldn't have known what it was. He says, so it's all your fault, Dawood. No one knew about a khala until you opened your big mouth, he said. <laughs> Rahimahullah. And I don't take uh, the blame for that. You know, I had to talk about it, of course. So Sheikh Salah Falzan, he says, فَهَذَا وَعِيدٌ شَدِيدٌ فَإِن كَانَتِ الْمُفَارَقَةُ فِي الْعَقِيدَةِ بِحَيْثُ يَعْبُدُ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ فَهَذَا قُفْرٌ Sheikh Salah Falzan, he says, here, what Imam al-Barbahari has mentioned, citing from the text of the hadith from the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Shaykh Salah Fawzani says, فَهَذَا وَعِيدٌ شَدِيدٌ This is a severe threat. This is a severe threat, meaning from Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and of course, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is not going to threaten us with anything, except that, that threat originated from Allah. He said, this is a severe threat. For if that departure is a departure with regards to the aqidah, the belief, in a manner, for instance, Sheikh Salah says, that the person worships other than Allah, because there are different types of departure. As Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi said, there's a total departure and there's a partial departure. He said, that departure... If it is entailing worshipping other than Allah, then this is kufr. وَإِن كَانَتِ الْمُفَارَقَةُ دُونَ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ ضَلَالِ And if that departure, that mufaraqa, that departure is less than that, then it is misguidance. فَمُفَارَقَةُ الْجَمَاعَةِ لَا خَيْرَ فِيهَا Said nonetheless, departure from the jama'ah has no good in it. Departure from the jama'ah has no good in it. He says, وَفِي hadith, Like in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْجَمَاعَةِ فَإِنَّ يَدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْجَمَاعَةِ Shaykh Salah Fawzan, he brings the hadith that is collected by Imam al-Humaydi and his Musnad, and Imam Ahmed and his Musnad, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Upon you is the jama'ah. Obligatory upon you is the jama'ah. For indeed the hand of Allah is with the jama'ah. Ikhwan al-Muslimin will tell you that means us. Jama'at al-Tabligh, they'll tell you that means us. Shaykh Rabia ibn Had al-Markhali, Habibullah, he said, in my opinion, fi nadhari, he said, in my opinion, there is the, the, the most horrendous, most dangerous two groups out of all the deviant jama'ah is the jama'at al-tabligh and the ikhwan al-muslimin. He said they are more dangerous than the khawarij. They are more dangerous than the khawarij. Why? He says, because the Khawarij, they don't want to come into your masjids. They don't really want to infiltrate your masjids. Because they don't even believe you're Muslims. They stay away from you. He said, but the Jamaat al-Tabligh and the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, 
They infiltrate your houses. They infiltrate your messages. They infiltrate your centers. They infiltrate your women. They infiltrate your, wi- your wives. They infiltrate your children. He said, in my opinion, there are no two jama'ahs, no two groups that are more dangerous and horrendous upon the people of the sunnah than the jama'atul tabligh and the ikhwanul muslimin. Then Shaykh Salah Fawzan, he says, وَلَمَّا أَخْبَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حُذَيْفَ تَبَنَ الْيَمَانِ بِمَا يَحْصُلُوا مِنَ الْفِتْنِ وَتَفَرُّقِي قَالَ لَهُ حُذَيْفَ مَا تَأْمُرُنِي إِنْ أَدْرَكَنِي ذَلِكِ قال أن تلزم جماعة المسلمين وإمامهم Shaykh Salah Fawzan, he says, so when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu ta'ala radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa rada about what was going to occur of the trials and tribulations and chaos and confusion and fighting and all of the other words that can be placed into the word fitna he's, and also when he informed him of the separation and the division of the Muslims, Hudayfa said to the Prophet, meaning he asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma ta'muruni in adrakani dhalik? What do you command or order me to do if that should reach me? If I should encounter that, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the divisions, meaning the separations, meaning the fitna, what do you order me to do? And don't think, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ was only ordering Hudayfa. He was ordering all of us until Yom Qiyamah. What do you order me to do if I should come upon that time? The Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said that you stick to the jama'ah of the Muslims. Once again, it doesn't mean the individual parties and societies that the Muslims have set up for themselves, and they fall into, by doing that, hizbiya. They fall into tahazzub. They fall into ta'assub. They fall into takattul. They fall into qawmiyya. They fall into blocks and parties and bigoted partisanships. By saying, I'm with this person whether he's right or wrong. I'm with this person whether he's right or wrong. Because he's with my group, and he's with my party, and he's with this, and he's with that, and I'm with them, whether they're right or wrong. We're not Democrats in Islam. We're not Republicans in Islam. We don't stick to a people who belong to a party, whether they're right or wrong. Because our wala and our bara, our loyalty and our disavowalment is not to people and groups and parties and jama'ah. Our wala and our bara is to Allah and His Messenger and those who believe and obey them. That's whom we stick to. And when they deviate from it, we advise them like the Shaykh said. Like those ulama said, when a person leaves Salafiyya, we advise them and we give them that which Allah's Messenger told us to give them from the advice. But we do not support them in their wrong. And we do not agree with them when they are incorrect. Sheikh Salah Hawzan, he says, So when Hudayfa asked, What do you command me to do if I should encounter that? He said, Stick to the jama'ah of the Muslims and their imam. And their imam. Sheikh Salah Hawzan, he says, فَالْجَمَاعَةُ لَا تَكُونُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرَيْنِ So the jama'ah cannot be, listen closely, the jama'ah cannot be except by two matters. It can't exist except by two matters. Al-amru al-awwalu an yakuna manhajuha al-kitabu wa sunnah. Laysa manhajuha mazhab fulanin wa la qawla fulanin bal al-kitabu wa sunnatu. The first matter of the two that have to exist in order for, to, for it to be al jamaatul haqiqiyya the real, actual jama'ah, is that their methodology, their minhaj, has to be the book and the sunnah. 
The methodology of Al-Ittihad in Somalia is not upon the Kitab and the Sunnah. The methodology of Al-Ittisam in Somalia is not upon the Kitab and the Sunnah. The methodology of Shabab, Shabab is not upon the methodology of the Book and the Sunnah. The Shaykh he says, لَيْسَ مَنْ هَجُهَا مَذْهَبَ فُلَانَ It can't be the methodology of or the, the, the madhab of so-and-so. And it can't be upon the statement of so-and-so. بَلِ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ It has to be upon the book and the sunnah. الْأَمْرُ thani. And there's no third one. The second matter. أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهَا إِمَامٌ مُسْلِمٌ يَقُودُهَا وَتَرْجِعُ إِلَيْهِ وَلَا يُمْكِنُ أَن تَجْتَمِعَ جَمَاعَةٌ بِدُونِ إِمَامٍ He says the second matter, for it to be a real jama'ah, the jama'ah that we've been talking about this evening, is that it has to have a Muslim imam that leads it. It has to have a Muslim imam that leads it. Not like the group in America, that their imam is a man who's doing life in federal prison. How in the world is a person going to be the imam of the jama'ah in federal prison? How? How? The sheikh, he goes on. وَتَرْجِعُ إِلَيْهِ And it goes back to him. Those affairs go back to that imam. لَا يُمْكِنُ أَن تَجْتَمِعَ جَمَاعَةٌ بِدُونِ imam. There it is not possible for them to gather, for that jama'ah to come together without an imam. And here, brothers and sisters, please understand, this does not mean the imam of a masjid. This is a newly invented matter like we have in America, and maybe, maybe that disease has hit Canada. But in America, we have many imams, many imams that take a bay'ah, the imam of a masjid. The imam who works for Federal Express is taking a bay'ah, a pledge of allegiance. How in the world is a guy that works for UPS or Federal Express or Tim Hortons going to take a bay'ah? And they have to obey him and follow his every command. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. The sheikh he says, لا بد من إمام يكون مرجعا لها. He says it is inevitable to have an imam that those affairs, that those affairs of the jama'ah, they go back to him. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ لِحُذَيْفَةٍ So for that reason, the Prophet said to صلى الله عليه وسلم to Hudayfa, tell them to jama'ah the Muslims وإمامهم stick to the jama'ah of the Muslims and their imam. قال فإن لم يكن لهم جماعة ولا إمام. then حذيفة said but if there is no جماعة and no imam. in other words O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم you told us what we're supposed to do you've instructed me what I'm supposed to do if that happens but now O Messenger of Allah he's saying now what if there's no جماعة and there's no imam? the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said تَعْتَزِلُوا تِلْكَ الْفِرَقُ Then stay away from all those groups. Then stay away from all those groups. Sheikh Saleh Fawzani says, أَمَرَهُ أَنْ يَعْتَزِلَ تِلْكَ الْفِرَقَ فَلَا يَكُونَ إِلَّا مَعَ جَمَاعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He commanded him to step away from, to stay away from, to distance himself from all of those groups. And that this cannot happen, that he should not be upon that, except there, that he be with the jama'ah of the Muslims. وَلَا يَكُونُ مَعَ جَمَاعَاتٍ غَيْرِ الْجَمَاعَاتِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And that they cannot, he cannot be, meaning Hudayfa and us, if we encounter that time. No jama'ah, no imam. That he cannot be with those jama'at, those different jama'ah, other than the jama'ah of the Muslims. بَلْ يَبْقَى وَحْدَهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ But rather the Prophet ﷺ is saying that he just sticks to what he is upon by himself. He remains singularly by himself 
upon the truth. إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُ الْمَوْتِ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكِ Until death comes to him and overtakes him. Until death comes to him while he's upon that truth. فَهَذَا فِيهِ أَنَّهُ لَا يَكُونُ الْإِنسَانُ مَعُ جَمَاعَاتِ الْمُخَالَفَةِ الْمُخَالِفَةِ لِمَنْهَجِ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُونَ جَمَاعَةً إِلَّا بِشَرْطَيْنِ So in this, in conclusion, in this, a person cannot be with an opposing jama'ah that is opposing the methodology of the truth. Nor can there be a jama'ah. Those people cannot be considered a jama'ah except with two conditions. Except with two conditions. أَنْ يَكُونَ مَنْ هَجُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالسُنَّةِ that their methodology be the book and the sunnah, wa man hajj salaf is salih, and the methodology of our rightly guided predecessors. Wa an yakuna lahum imamun muslimun yakuduhum, wa yarji'una ilayhi. And number two, that they have for themselves a Muslim imam to whom they return to, meaning with all their affairs, فَلَا دِينَ إِلَّا بِجَمَاعَةٍ For there is no religion except with a jama'ah. وَلَا جَمَاعَةَ إِلَّا بِإِمَامٍ And there is no jama'ah without an imam. وَلَا إِمَامٍ إِلَّا بِسَمْعٍ وَطَاعَةٍ And there is no imam, no ruler. Imam here means ruler. Except with hearing and obeying. هَذَا مَنْهَجُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَهَذَا هُوَ السُنَّةُ الَّتِي يَشْرَحُهَا رحمه الله. So this is the methodology of the Muslims and this is the sunnah of which the Imam rahimahullah has explained. And we'll stop so we can say what the Mu'adhan is saying. So as we mentioned in conclusion, Sheikh Salaf al he says, وَفِي هَذَا نَهْيٌ عَنَ الشُّذُوذِ مِنْ فِي الْآرَاءِ وَالْمُخَالَفَاتِ وَأَنَّ الْإِنسَانَ يَلْزَمُ جَمَاعَةً مَا دَامُوا أَنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا عَلَى ضَلَالٍ He says, so here, this is a prohibition. A prohibition from those deviations pertaining to those ideologies and those opinions that are in opposition, meaning to the way of Ahl Sunnah and the system of Jama'ah, meaning in Islam. That the person has to stick to the Jama'ah and he stays with them as long as they are not upon misguidance. Then lastly, the statement of the Imam Al-Barbahari, rahimahullah, خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنَقِهِ that he removes from himself or he throws off from himself the yoke from his neck, the yoke of Islam. Sheikh Saleh Bawzani says, كَانَ مِنْ عَادَةِ الْعَرَبَ أَنَّهُمْ يَضَعُونَ لِلْأَغْنَامِ رِبَاطًا فِي رِقَابِهَا He says this was the customs of the Arabs. This was the customs of the Arabs 
that they used to place around their cattle's necks those things that we call in English yokes. And if any of you have ever seen them, and you probably, even the non-Arab, there's some non-Arabs here that may come from some African countries, or even from some Asian countries, that you see this thing that has the holes as a long piece of wood with a rope tied to it, and it keeps the animals in line. The, the animals put their heads in it, they close it, and it keeps the, the animals from going from one place to another, as the Sheikh says. Hatta la tatafarraqa wa tadi'a. So that they won't become separated and get lost. So they put these things around their neck that has one rope tied to a lot of rings with these things where the yokes, turn, they, they, they close them so that the animals can be directed and they won't get lost. And then the sheikh says, وَيَأْكُولَهَا الذِّئْبُ And so that the wolves won't eat them. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, this, this similitude that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us, SubhanAllah, listen, look at the wisdom of it. Look at the example that, first of all, he's talking to Arabs. So the Arabs immediately understood what he was talking about. When they said, that he takes, فَقَدْ خَلَعَ رِبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ عُنَقِهِ That they removed the yoke, because they know what a yoke was. That they removed the yoke of Islam from their necks. But for us, who, make, who come from urban areas, it may not, we may not catch it. So the sheikh, he's explaining it. That this yoke is basically for two reasons. Number one, so that the, that particular thing that their necks have been yoked, have been placed in this yoke, won't become separated from each other and be lost. And number two, so that the wolves won't get them. Who are the wolves for us, brothers and sisters? The wolves for us are the mustashriqoon, the orientalists. The wolves for us are the Yahud, the Jews. The wolves for us are the Christians. The wolves for us are the Sikhs, the Baha'is, the Hindus. The wolves for us are the Mu'tazila, or those who have their beliefs. The wolves for us are the Ash'ariya, or those who have their beliefs. The wolves for us are those different jama'at who hold their beliefs. So we need to put the yoke of Islam around our necks and never ask for a khula. Never remove it. Never remove our, this yoke from our necks. So the sheikh, he says, he says, وَهَذِهِ هَذِهِ الْأَرْبِطَةُ تَكُونُ مُتَّصِلَةً بِحَبْلٍ وَاحِدٍ يَجْمَعُهَا مِنْ أَجْلِ مُحَافَظَةِ عَلَيْهَا he says, so these, these ropes, these cords, they are placed to one main cord. They're attached to one main cord so that those particular animals can be protected, so they can be preserved. فَشَبَّهَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لُزُومَ الْجَمَاعَةِ بِهَذَا الْأَمْرِ فَإِنَّ الْجَمَاعَةَ هِيَ الرِّبَاطِ الْوَاقِي مِنَ الْمَهَالِكِ كالرباط الذي يكون في رقاب الأغنام يحفظها من الذئب ومن الدياع. Sheikh Salaf Al-Zani says, So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving us a comparison. Or rather, he's giving us a similitude. He's giving us an example of the sticking and clinging to the jama'ah of this particular matter of sticking and clinging to the jama'ah for the jama'ah is that remaining connector that protects us from destruction like that cord or that yoke or that rope which is put around the necks of the cattle to protect them from the wolves and protect them from being lost and then Imam al-Barbahari ends it and will continue tomorrow inshallah. Qawluhu wa kana dalan mudillan. And he is leading, he is astray and he is leading others astray. Dalan fi nafsihi an tariq Mudillan li ghayrihi. Dalan fi nafsihi wa mudillan li man aqtaba bihi wa attaba'ahu. Sheikh Salah Falzan, he says, the meaning of this here is that he is astray himself from the correct path and he's leading others astray. 
He himself is astray, and he's leading whoever is his, who's following his example also. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُشَاقِقَ الرَّسُولِ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوليه ما تولى ونصله جهنم وساءت مصيرا This is Surah An-Nisa, inshallah, it's verse 115. An interpretation of the meaning of that verse, inshallah. Whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance has been made crystal clear to him and he follows other than the path of the believers, we will leave him to that which he turned to, and cast him into Jahannam, the hellfire of which we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and save us from, wasa'at masira, and what a terrible evil journey's in. Sheikh Salah Fawzani says, فَالْوَاجِبُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَتَّبِعَ سَبِيلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يُخَالِفَهُمْ وَلَا يَشَذَّ عَنْهُمْ So it is obligatory. It is obligatory upon the Muslim to follow the path of the believers, meaning the menhaj of the salaf, and to not oppose them, nor to swerve away from them. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. And then tomorrow, inshallah, tomorrow evening, we will be beginning with the statement of the noble Imam al-Barbahari, the noble Imam al-Barbahari. Inshallah, may Allah have mercy on you. Point number five, we will skip three and four. Point number five, may Allah have mercy on you. Know that the religion is what came from Allah, the blessed and most high. It is not something left to the intellect and opinions of men. Knowledge of it is what comes from Allah and His Messenger. So do not follow anything based upon your desires and so deviate away from the religion and leave Islam. There will be no excuse for you since Allah's Messenger wasallam, explained the sunnah to his ummah and made it clear to his companions and they are the jama'ah and they are the main body and the main body is the truth and his followers. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. جزاكم الله خير. إن شاء الله. Just an announcement about the schedule. Our next talk is tomorrow at 12 midday uh, with our brother Abu Dhir here. That will take us up to Dhuhr tomorrow, Salat al Dhuhr. Right after that, Abu Ab- uh, Abbas Musa Richardson has his weekly class on the explanation of Kitab al Tawheed. So those classes will run back to back, being uh, broken by Salat al Dhuhr. We've uh, designed that strategically so that you get to benefit from both classes. And then inshallah you have a long break to get lunch and also to attend to any affairs you may have on the weekend. And then again after Maghrib is the final session uh, with uh, our brother Dawud Adib. So inshallah we invite you to join us tomorrow for all of these sessions. And uh, inshallah we make isha now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.